far on. So oh, this is a very heavy question. <laughs> You're forcing me now to enter into Islamic eschatology. Yes. I'm writing a book on Dajjal. But for the last year and a half, I have not written even one line. Because I am now receiving more than a hundred emails every day <laughs> from all over the world. And sometimes I receive an email and it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. And so I am not getting the time to write. Has modern Western civilization emerged by chance? Is it an accident of history? If modern Western civilization can emerge in history by accident, then I say that a cow can also jump over the moon. <laughs> yeah. Well then, if it did not emerge by accident, what is there which can explain the emergence of this amazing civilization with its scientific and technological revolution which is still continuing, which has given to this civilization the power which is unprecedented in human history. That all of the rest of mankind combined, including Saddam Hussein, cannot match the power, the military power of modern Western civilization. Is this by accident? And if it is not, what is the explanation? Not only is this the most powerful civilization in terms of military might to have emerged in human history, but also, and this is the last characteristic I'm going to mention because we don't have endless time, it uses its power to corrupt every single thing that it touches. The, the word used by Allah in the Qur'an is fasad. And this civilization is engaged in universal fasad, corrupting the political civilization, political life of the world, corrupting the economic life, corrupting the market, corrupting the money, monetary system, the money that we use, corrupting the educational system, corrupting the relationship between the male and the female, corrupting the sexual life, corrupting sports and entertainment. But most dangerous of all, corrupting and destroying the spiritual life and reducing mankind today to a world filled with one-eyed people. Even with a PhD from MIT, he still sees with only one eye. What is it that explains this universal facade? Let me use the term in the Quran. Did the Quran not say that it has come to explain all things? to explain all things. What is the explanation? 
of the universal facade. There are those who don't want to answer that question. Too loaded a question. There are those who because of bad methodology in the study of Quran and Hadith are incapable of answering that question correctly. But when you go to the Quran and to the Hadith, there's only one answer. Inna ya'juja wa ma'juja mufsiduna fil Inna ya'juja wa ma'juja mufsiduna fil The universal facade that we have in the world today is explained in the Quran. It's coming from ya'juja and ma'juja, God and Allah. Nobody teaches that subject today. Nope. I have been teaching it for 20 years. As a voice crying in the wilderness. They laughed at me for 20 years. But they're not laughing today anymore. No. Praise be to Allah. I held myself. I held my guns. I didn't back out. Laugh as much as you want. I'm not going to stop. And I wrote my book on Gog and Magog, Alhamdulillah, I saw so And with Gog and Magog is Dajjal. Modern Western civilization is Dajjal's most magnificent creation. If you can't understand that, too bad for you. And Dajjal is using modern Western civilization to achieve his goal. And his goal is to rule the world from Jerusalem. And then to declare that I am Masih, the Messiah. And all the one-eyed people will accept him as the Messiah. And when that is finished, he'll rub his hands and say, mission accomplished. Then Allah will send the true Messiah. But it will be too late for Islamic scholarship to be that kind. That's my answer to you. Any other questions? Yes. If we are not to take help from NATO, and from NATO's client, Saudi Arabia, and NATO's client, Qatar. If we are not to take help from these people and call for no-fly zone, <laughs> because now you have told us what is the Quran. We didn't know it before, now we know it. And we want to make Tawbah. What should we do? If we are to get rid of those who rule us today and who are dictators, the answer is whoever you turn to for help, and you launch an armed struggle anywhere in the world as Muslims, NATO will destroy you. NATO will destroy you. You're not allowed to do it. The only ones you can turn to for help are your worst enemy. <laughs> will you enter into the embrace of your worst enemy to achieve this goal? Is that the sunnah? My heart is bleeding and that's why I raise my voice. Because I know what's coming for Egypt. If one doesn't know it, Morsi doesn't know it. He has an engineering degree, president of Egypt. He doesn't know it. He doesn't even understand up to now why the attack on Gaza took place. I don't know whether he understands why the 16 Egyptian police officers, policemen were killed in Ramadan. But I understand. You cannot, you cannot succeed as Muslims 
in any armed struggle other than one, unless you go into NATO's arms and take help from NATO. And if you do that, after what I've said, I don't want to see your face, I don't want to hear your voice, stay away from me, you're not my brother. <coughs> the only armed struggle that we will succeed in is the one in which there is guaranteed success, guaranteed by Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. Did he not say, لَتُقَاتِلُنَّ الْيَوْمِ لَتُقَاتِلُنَّ الْيَهُودِ وَلَتَقْتُلُنَّهُمْ You're going to fight the Jews and you're going to defeat them? So, you want to make alliance with them? NATO? لَتُقَاتِلُنَّ الْيَهُودِ وَلَتَقْتُلُنَّهُمْ حَتَّى يَقُولُ الْحَجَرِ That time even the stones will speak. يا مسلم هذا يهودي ورائي فتاة على فقط إذا جو هايدين بيهاين مي كمن كل هم نات the Jew who is standing beside me in a joint struggle against Zionism not the Jew who leaves the United States and goes to Palestine and stands up in front of an Israeli tank to stop that tank from demolishing a Palestinian home and then the tank rolls over her and kills her not that Jew or Christian the Prophet is speaking about those Jews who are oppressors oppressors and not all Jews are oppressors so my answer is it is only that struggle which will succeed if you cannot go to Khorasan yourself and join in the armed struggle because they don't want you because they don't know whether you are friend or spy <laughs> and they cannot have in their ranks those who don't speak their language it would be strategically dangerous for them. So if they accept you in their ranks, alhamdulillah, you join the jihad. But if not, you can support the jihad in many other ways. That's the only one with a guarantee of success, yes. A question about fractional reserve banking and Islamic banking. Allah is al razak He is He who creates wealth, Al-Ghani. And in the Quran He says that He is Badi of Samawati Wallah. He is not only Fatir, He is not only Khalik. Khalik is the one who creates. Fatir is the one who originates from point of origin. But Badi is more than that. Badi of Samawati Wallah means he creates from nothing. Only Allah creates from nothing. Creates wealth from nothing. But our enemies today are creating money from nothing. Thanks to the scholars of Islam. Thanks to the scholars of Islam who will not raise their voice. None of them will raise their voices. Praise be to Allah for one or two. The Imam of Masjid Al-Aqsa in Jerusalem just made a statement. He agrees with me on money, alhamdulillah. What the enemy does is that he is creating wealth out of nothing. Fractional reserve banking is one of the ways in which they do it. That if a bank has so much money in its books, it has 10 ringgits in its books, it owns 10 ringgits. Don't ask me 
how it got the ten ring inside. <laughs> That's a different story. Now we can lend the ten ringgits on interest, which of course is haram. But the bank does not lend ten ringgits on interest. It lends one thousand ringgits on interest. So where the other nine hundred and ninety ringgits came from? It came out of tin air. It is wealth created out of nothing. And if you create wealth out of nothing, you play in God. Do you need a PhD to understand shirk? Huh? Or are you waiting for fatwa from Mufti? Well, you better find a comfortable sofa to sit down and wait for that fatwa, because it will never come. But now, it's not, that's not only, that's only part of the subject. How did the bank get the ten ringgits? <laughs> what our enemy did was to take what Allah made halal and declare it to be haram. If you declare haram what Allah declared halal, is that shirk? Is that shirk? If you don't know it, then go and pick up your Quran, Surah Al Tawbah. Yes, it is shirk. And that's what they did. And if you accept it and follow them in it, you are also in the shirk, the monetary system. The Articles of Agreement of the International Monetary Fund that prohibited the use of gold as money. The Quran and the Sunnah declare gold and silver halal as money. The IMF declares gold haram as money. That is shirk. There are a number of reasons why they prohibited the use of gold as money. But they have never given those reasons. And if you ask them, why have you made gold prohibited, they'll never tell you why. Never. Up to now you will not find any written document anywhere. Two days ago in our conference on riba, my, excuse me, my lecture is on the internet now. You will find where I offered some, re some explanation why. They prohibited the use of gold as money. And one of the reasons was so that they could introduce their bogus money and have their bogus money stable. If you have gold alongside the bogus money, the bogus money will collapse. So they started printing paper and then giving to the paper a fixed value. But this is not taught in any university today. No university will tell you what I've just told you. No, they will never use this language. You probably lose your job. You print the paper and you give the paper a fictitious value. If that is not haram, what is haram? What Dr. Mahathir just pointed out recently is that now they have reached that stage where they don't want to print the paper anymore because they want to put seven trillion dollars more into the banking system and it'll take a long time to print seven trillion dollars. A lot of printing machine, a lot of paper, a lot of ink, 
a lot of armored cars and security guards and police motorcycles to transport it. It is much easier for the Federal Reserve to simply write a check and send it to the banks. And then the banks will insert seven trillion dollars more into their books. And then the banks, like the IMF, will approach, Hello, President Morsi, are you there? I hear Egypt wants an IMF loan. We could lend you four billion. I mean, we just got seven trillion. But in order for you to get this four billion, there are conditions you've got to meet. These are the conditionalities. Amongst them, you got a two-hour line. <coughs> Economic enslavement spells political servitude. And you got to bow down to the job and act in accordance with our commands so that Israel will survive. So it's fictitious money. And they're lending you fictitious money on interest. <laughs> when they lend the money to you and you enter into a legal agreement to pay back, then it becomes a part of the money system. Unless they lend it to you, it simply remains in the books. But after they lend it to you and you accept the loan, and a legal obligation to repay, now it becomes money. Is Islamic banking doing anything to prevent this? Is Islamic banking even recognizing the paper and plastic and electronic money to be bogus and fraudulent and corrupt? Dr. Mahathir should better understanding than the Muftis. <laughs> no. Islamic banking has not raised, raised even a little finger. Not even a little finger to expose the monetary system as bogus and fraudulent and corrupt and to call for the return of gold in our Do you think the present Turkish government is sincere or another client of Zionism? I no longer identify myself as a Sufi. No. I stop. I've said Sufism is al ihsan al ihsan is the highest stage of Islam. And I want to be confined to the Quran and Sunnah. If it's not in the Quran and Sunnah, I don't need it. One of the reasons why I have done that is because Turkey has powerful Sufi movements. And if you have a present Turkish government today in power, the Sufi movements in Turkey have played a strategic role. <laughs> Those Sufi movements in Turkey, and these words are going to reach them, and the government which represents them today, are comfortable as members of NATO. Not only are they members of NATO, but they seem to be proud of being members of NATO. And they're acting on NATO's behalf. They did it in Libya. As soon as the Libyan government fell, the first visitors were the British and French Prime Ministers on behalf of the Zionists. Guess who was the third? A Turkish Prime Minister. 
Yes. So my, my answer to the Turkish Prime Minister, and I can speak to him because I'm older than him, show respect for age, and to the government of Turkey, which is comfortable as a member of NATO, is that based on the Quran, based on the Quran, you have joined them and you no longer belong to us. We don't want to see your face. We don't want to hear your voice. Stay away from us. Whoever is part of NATO or supportive of NATO and of the Zionists. When I give an opinion in which I interpret anything, like a hadith, you will be a testimony to the fact that I always say to the people, do not accept my opinion. Is that true? I always say, do not accept my opinion unless and until you are convinced that it is correct. I can make mistakes. And if you uncritically accept everything I say, then you might perpetuate my mistake. But praise be to Allah for that student who can come and be my student, and tomorrow he can correct his teacher. I'll be proud of him. So I have interpreted the hadith about the Dajjal. That when he is released, he will live on earth for 40 days. Yawmun ka sana, yawmun ka shah, yawmun ka juma'a, wa sa'iru ayyamihi ka ayyamihi. One day which would be like a year, one day which would be like a month, one day which would be like a week, and all his days, meaning all the rest of his days, like your days. I recognize this to be religious symbolism. Like that the river Euphrates will uncover a mountain of gold. In the Riba conference I made a presentation based on this hadith. And the world of Islamic scholarship now has only two choices. Either you hold on to the literal view that the mountain of gold is going to come out of the river. Or, the explanation which I have given, there is no other. There is no other. My explanation is that the Prophet was saying that out of the Euphrates River, underneath the river, will emerge something in very large quantity which will function as gold. And that is oil. And when oil began to function as gold in 1973, the petrodollar was born. And today the petrodollar is the tightest rope around our neck. Similarly, I have interpreted a day like a year, a day like a month, a day like a week. And my interpretation is there in my book, Jerusalem in the Quran. It is translated to Bahasa. It is translated to Arabic, it is translated to French, it is translated to Spanish, it is translated to Urdu, it is translated to Bengali, it is translated to Bosnian language. Alhamdulillah. That when the Jal was released in a day which is like a year, among other things, the world experienced Pax Britannica. And Pax Britannica gave the world the British sterling pound as the international currency. If you have studied monetary economics, and you have another explanation, let me know it. 
And then the mysterious transformation took place from Pax Britannica to Pax Americana. And the US dollar replaced the sterling pound. And I say a day which is like a year ended and a day which is like a month replaced it. This analysis and interpretation was given about 12 years ago in my book Jerusalem and the Quran. And now we are located at that moment in time when Pax Americana is on its way out. And Pax Judaica is preparing to replace it, namely Jewish rule over the world, Israel. Israel. I am not saying that I want Israel to rule the world. That's not fair. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. I don't want that to happen. I am interpreting in this way. And in order for Israel to rule the world, the US dollar will have to go, as the sterling pound had to go, as the international currency. So, for 15 years or more now, I have been anticipating the collapse of the US dollar, and that when the US dollar collapses, it will be replaced by another money. Whether it will be the Israeli shekel, or whether they're going to coin a new term like Bangkok, I don't know. But a new monetary system is coming. And that new monetary system will be built firmly on the foundations of that mountain of gold from the river Euphrates. <laughs> Namely, petrol money. Petro money came into being when Henry Kissinger succeeded after the stage managed Arab Israeli War of 73. <laughs> succeeded in convincing Malik Faisal Rahimahullah to do that which was prohibited by the Sharia. And the king probably did not understand what he was doing. He agreed, he made an agreement with Kissinger and then got the Arab oil producing states to agree with him that oil will be sold for only US dollars. That's Haram. It's a violation of the free market and since the US dollar could no longer be redeemed for gold after August 1971, is a violation of the fair market. And so, the world is likely to experience a transition from the United States to Israel. The Arab Spring is there to serve that purpose. The big wars did not, not, did not start before the U.S. election. The attack on Gaza took place immediately after the U.S. election. But this is only the beginning. Big wars are coming. And those big wars, I believe, are going to be continuous for a number of years. And that they will culminate with the Malhamah, which is the attack the, 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 the war of the big, big titan, the US-led alliance and the Russian-led alliance and nuclear weapons being used. It has already collapsed. It is in a place, the hospital in Manhattan called ICU. And they're keeping it alive by a machine, life support machine. Yeah. I understand King Abdullah was also, was also on the same machine. And any time they pull the plug, that's it for the US dollar. Janaza. <laughs> when will they pull the plug? The plug can be pulled if there's an attack on Iran. A Turkish attack on Syria. 
an Israeli attack on Pakistan, an Israeli attack on, Iran, on, on Egypt, Syria, Egypt, Iran, Pakistan, these four flashpoints. Any one of these wars can be pulling the plug on the US dollar. Why should Muslims make an alliance with Russia? Did I ever say that Muslims should make an alliance with Russia? Did I ever say that Muslims should make, I am recommending alliance with Russia? <laughs> I never said that. I never said that. I'm not recommending any alliance with Russia or with China. Oh my gosh. I said that a man named Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala he said, not me, he said that he will make an alliance with Rome. It's there in the Hadith. And I analyzed it, if you allowed me to. And I said that prior to the revelation of the Quran, Rome was in Italy. And Rome worshipped idols. Pagan Roman idols. And then the Emperor Constantine became Christian and he took Rome out of Italy and he created the city of Constantinople. It was named after him. And so when the Quran was revealed, when the Quran was revealed and Allah says, Ghulibat in Rome, Allah is not speaking about a city in Italy. He's talking about the Byzantine Christian Empire, which had its headquarters in Constantinople. That is Rome in the Quran. When Sultan Muhammad al-Fatih conquered Constantinople, then he said, I am now Rome. This is Rome. <laughs> but the Eastern European Christians did not accept that. No. And they then transferred Rome to Moscow. And so they recognize Rome today to be Moscow. They recognize it. It's their Rome. <laughs> so when the Prophet wasallam said, you will make an alliance with Rome, I am interpreting that to be a Muslim alliance with Russia and other allies of Russia. That alliance is already coming into being. Pakistan is now moving in that direction. Whether you like it or whether you don't, that's your business. I'm not concerned with your views. Pakistan is now moving in the direction of Russia. Ask any Pakistani here, you tell you what changes have taken in Pakistani foreign policy. Iran is firmly moving in that direction, an alliance with Russia. Syria is already in an alliance with Russia, which is why Syria is under attack. Russia has a naval base in Syria, and when NATO takes over Syria, goodbye to Russia. <laughs> goodbye to Russia is good news for Israel. Good news for Israel. So yes, I understand your concern that Imran Hussein should be recommending an alliance with Russia. But I've not done that. I'm simply interpreting the Hadith. And whenever I give an interpretation, I always say don't accept it. The attack on Gaza. 
It came after the U.S. elections. <laughs> not before, that's not by accident. My opinion, and I can be wrong, my opinion is that Israel, in order to prepare the way for Dajjal to rule over the Holy Land, has to cleanse the Holy Land, cleanse it of Arabs. The easiest part of the Holy Land to be cleansed of Arabs is Gaza. Four years ago, the blistering attack on Gaza, with Hosni Mubarak blocking the way to Egypt, was to shatter them. About 1,400 were killed. But the next attack on Gaza must be ten times more ferocious than that one. But this time you must have a Juan al Muslimon in charge of Egypt. Firmly in the saddle. So you've got to do something to get rid of the military as an obstacle. And they did it. <laughs> you've got to do something to get rid of the legal establishment as an obstacle. And they did it. And so Morsi is now firmly in charge. Ikhwan is now firmly in charge. The boat is rocking a little bit, but it's still firmly in charge. So when the attack on Gaza takes place, it will be so ferocious that Egypt will have to open the doors. And you'll have something called Exodus. Exodus is a book in the Bible, in the Torah. Exodus. Mean a mass movement of people fleeing out of Gaza into Egypt. And whoever is so brave to remain in Gaza, it's just a mopping up operation. <laughs> and in this way, Israel will be able to say, mission accomplished. We have cleansed Gaza of the Arabs. But there's also another agenda. I don't know which one comes first, or which will take priority over the other. And that is that because somebody rewrote the Torah, to put into the Torah that Al-Ardul Muqaddasa, the Holy Land, extends from the river of Egypt which is the river Nile, to the river Euphrates, the Forat. This is Al Abdul Muqaddasa. Of course, it's a lie. Of course, it's false. But that's what they did. So, if the Jal is to rule over the Holy Land, the implication is that Israel will have to extend its territorial frontiers to take back Sinai and also to take physical control of the Eastern Delta <coughs> from the river Egypt to the Red Sea, from the river Nile to the Red Sea. You need therefore to prepare the way for a big war with Egypt. And preparing the way for a big war with Egypt is getting rid of your favorite son, Husni Mubarak, who served you for long enough, and putting Ikhwan in charge. And then forcing Ikhwan government in Egypt to support the Palestinians. And that, that support must continue to escalate until Israel can cry terrorism. And prepare the grounds for attack on Egypt. When the attack on Egypt takes place, it will have to be not only from the air but from the ground because you need to seize land. In order to succeed with a big country like Egypt, you need to attack from all sides. So you need NATO in Libya. 
and thanks to those who have eyes and yet do not see. NATO is now in Libya. <laughs> yes, thanks to those who have eyes and yet do not see. And consider Imran Hussein to be misguided and a supporter of Gaddafi and a supporter of Assad and such nonsense. <laughs> NATO is now in Libya. So the attack will take place from both sides. Egypt, Egypt will be attacked from the east by Israel and from the west by NATO. From the north you'll have a, a, a naval blockade and bombardment. And they're fishing in the south with Sudan, South Sudan, to be able to attack, make an attack from the south as well. Ethiopia and South Sudan are both clients of Israel today. Ethiopia and South Sudan are both clients of Israel today. The only thing that's standing in the way is Sudan. That's all. If they succeed in destabilizing Sudan, and that is the possibility, then, if, then Egypt would be surrounded from all sides. And so the attack on Gaza, I believe, has to be analyzed from the perspective of that grand design of what are the ultimate objectives. You've been a wonderful audience with me. I know we still have questions there, but we have to call it a day. Uh, Inshallah, uh, we hope and pray that you'll find the time to listen to my lecture that I gave in the Riba conference, which is on YouTube, which will help you to understand more about the monetary system. ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتوب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم برحمتك يا رب military might to have emerged in human history. But also, and this is the last characteristic I'm going to mention because we don't have the less time. It uses its power to corrupt every single thing that it touches. The, the word used by Allah in the Qur'an is fasad. And this civilization is engaged in universal fasad, corrupting the political civilization, political life of the world, corrupting the economic life, corrupting the market, corrupting the money, monetary system, the money that we use, corrupting the educational system, corrupting the relationship between the male and the female, corrupting the sexual life, corrupting sports and entertainment. But most dangerous of all, corrupting and destroying the spiritual life and reducing mankind today to a world filled with one-eyed people. Even with a PhD from MIT, 
He still sees with only one eye. What is it that explains this universal facade? If it did not emerge by accident, what is there which can explain the emergence of this amazing civilization with its scientific and technological revolution which is still continuing, which has given to this civilization a power which is unprecedented in human history, that all of the rest of mankind combined, including Saddam Hussein, cannot match the power, the military power of modern Western civilization. Is this by accident? And if it is not, what is the explanation? Not only is this the most powerful civilization, This is a very heavy question. <laughs> You're forcing me now to enter into Islamic eschatology yes. or Ilm al Zaman. I'm writing a book on Dajjal, but for the last year and a half, I've not written even one line. because I'm now receiving more than a hundred emails every day <laughs> from all over the world. And sometimes I receive an email and it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. And so I'm not getting the time to write. Has modern Western civilization emerged by chance? Is it an accident of history? If modern Western civilization can emerge in history by accident, then I say that a cow can also jump over the moon. <laughs> yeah. Well then...